Hello there. This is just a bite-sized peek into our comprehensive back-end development course, and I'm all about sharing snippets like this on our YouTube free of charge. So sit back and enjoy the video. But if you're interested in diving deeper, why not consider a Covalence community membership for just $25 a month? It's your golden ticket to a full stack learning experience curating all of these videos into a comprehensive course. Complete with lecture notes, reference sheets, and challenging labs that are really gonna push your learning into overdrive. But the perks don't end there. You're gonna unlock uh, the keys to our front end and our React or Mind React course as well. Not to mention you're gonna have access to live Discord support, meaning you can harass me all you want exclusively of coding events, plus professional assistance for crafting killer portfolios and resumes. Just think of it as your personal coding toolkit, ready and waiting to help you build your future. So check the description down below for a link, and remember, whether you're here for a casual browse or a deep dive, just enjoy the video. Hello, my friends. Welcome to this video lecture on index re-exports and the barrel method. This is, again, in the broader scheme of React project organization structure, common practices, and ideas for you to gain inspiration from to build uh, maintainable and scalable projects. So the challenge we end up encountering the more we code in our React projects as we begin to proliferate more utilities, more components, services, hooks, context, all these crazy things, you're gonna find yourself navigating a deep folder structure. The depth often translates to verbose, nasty looking import statements resulting in code that's both clutter and harder to manage. But of course, if you're, if you're using TypeScript, you can just alias all this and be done with it. But if we don't have that at our disposal, we can kind of talk about a common approach you will see and can find YouTube, uh, other YouTube videos on uh, medium blog posts, all that kind of fun stuff on this called the barrel method. And in particular, how that is a type of index re-exporting. So this is what I mean. I mean, the larger scale your project gets, the nastier looking your imports are going to get over here. Uh, maybe you don't mind these, but again, the larger your project grows, the nastier these are gonna look. So let's talk about some ways to get around this problem we're looking at before we streamline this as a solution. So there's a concept called quite literally re-exporting. It's a fundamental concept. It is our umbrella term. And we can imagine that underneath this umbrella, a more specific version of re-exporting is what we call the barrel method and it's a common approach in React projects to bundle these things together. So let's see what we're talking about here, right? So re-exporting. At its core, re-exporting is a mechanism that allows you to import modules in one file and then immediately exporting them, making them available for other parts of your application. It's a foundation for what we popularly call, like I said, the barrel method. So with that umbrella term defined, let's see how the barrel method takes that and specializes it and actually helps us here in our React applications. So the barrel method is essentially a way to harness the power of re-exporting. It's about grouping several exports from a module into one consolidated export, akin to having a barrel from which previous exports can be drawn. So we take all these things, put them in a barrel, at the top of the barrel, have like an easy way to grab what we need out of the barrel. So that's what we're doing with here. For example, I could have a components directory with an index file that links all these things together, where we export uh, our button, our modal, and our alert out of this index file, which will then give us the ability to organize all components that can be found in reference from a singular entry index point. Or like the name of the file implies, it indexes all things from the components folder. It is the top of our barrel that we can reach in and grab easily whatever we need. So it cleans up our imports, but it also streamlines our code base's organizational structure. Remember in the previous video where we explored that Jira clone repository and I talked about the folder structure and organization that I liked? I mentioned we're gonna talk about how that export file was working and this is where that video is. So looking through here, we're gonna see that again, this barrel method elevates our re-export statements, right? It focuses on clustering exports, right? And we enhance that approach by putting it all into an index.js file at different strategic locations, typically at folder or directory levels that have a bunch of modules within them that need to be used elsewhere, right? So in tandem, these things provide a powerful way of giving us this beautiful looking import statement that gives us way much nicer clarity and the luxury of organizing your files without constantly adjusting import paths, right? If I ever need to import a component ever again, I will do a named import statement as such, button, comma, modal, comma, alert, add commas, 
and I will automatically just add commas and add additional components to my import statement, and I'll never have to change the path. Now, granted, this path has only two directories, where this one up here was five. This part may not be able to get fixed as easily without aliasing, but nevertheless, you will save yourself the additionals of uh, writing out the name of each individual thing you're looking to import here. So that part is saved. The depth of the parents could be saved depending on how you structure your re-exports, for example. That's something that can take into consideration. But nevertheless, uh, having, especially in TypeScript, IntelliSense can auto-complete your import named components. That way you can have, again, auto-complete, um, typo support from IntelliSense and things like that. It's a huge advantage to utilizing this method, right? So putting it all together, we, if we see that we're commonly, uh, if we have commonly imported modules, like the paths are all the same minus one file name difference, that's a great pinpoint for uh, grouping things together for an import statement. We introduce an index file into a directory. So in the relevant directory, you place a index.js file or we adapt an existing one should you be using it in some other form or fashion. That way we can harness that barrel method by bundling all of our exports in that given file. And then we simply have to go and change our ref or refresh our import routes should that be the case. And in places where those modules are imported, we revise the import path to point to the directory and not anything else, implicitly targeting the index.js file. Remember in node module resolution, index files are, in, are looked for first if no file name is specified. So if we specify the name of a directory in an import path, especially in a relative import path, it will auto look for an index file if we don't name a file specifically, which means we go from the individually named uh, import names right here. These are also default level imports, meaning we can call these variables whatever we want, and we had to be careful about that, versus re-index, an index re-exporter using the barrel method allows us to take this and cleaning up into a much nicer set of imports. And believe me, when you have like 10 components imported into a file, it looks very nice to have import curly braces, an indented list of 10 names, close curly braces from path. It looks beautiful in a large scale application. So that's what the barrel method is. At its core, it's not that complex, but it's something that you may not take into consideration as a newer React developer until you build something substantial enough or you're introduced to the concept. And once I discovered this was a thing and how it works, that's pretty much how I organize all of my projects again, like I talked about in one of the previous lectures. Now, uh, I was considering ending the discussion here and moving this to a different lecture, but I figured I might as well continue about some things in this lecture that are tangentially related to this whole shenanigans I've talked about up here with the barrel method. So remember in that Jira clone project in that last lecture where I, we saw folders that were using components and they were all all those components were typically their own folders as well with their own indexes inside of that. And you're like, uh, why are we going to the lengths to do this, right? So why use a folder per component? Why not just have each component be its own file, especially when you're first starting out? Well, over time, surprise, surprise, our components are definitely going to grow in complexity and you might want to split things from a single file, which could be hard and difficult to maintain and work in together. And you can split a component into multiple files. For example, you can enhance the readability. Each file has a single responsibility. It's easier to find specifically what you're looking for. It promotes reusability. And again, like the examples down here, I'll get into a minute, can be reused in other components should they need to be. And then facilitating team collaboration, I think is the big one. This makes it so you don't run into as many merge conflicts when you have more than one person, for example, working on a button component. If you're using styled components, you can extract styled components out into their own styles directory, which are imported to the index, which are then composed together, which are then exported out as the button from the button folder, for example. You could also take large class names in Tailwind and separate those or abstract those into individual components that when built together, build your index, which which builds your button as the default export from that directory. So there are a lot of great use cases the more complex your component gets, but obviously this could be overkill depending on the scale of your project. So here's an example structure that you could see from that Jira clone lecture that I tried to recreate here in a fun little way. We have a button directory. So instead of a button.jsx that would compose all things button put together, that could be very nasty the bigger and, and crazier your button happens to get with more props and forward refs and all those other crazy stuff you might have to worry about, memoization, callbacking and whatnot. Maybe you're using a utility first CS uh, a kit like Tailwind and your class names are getting ludicrously long on several levels of divs and buttons and stuff like that. So you might want to abstract things out 
uh, or abstract out your styled components that end up building the button. But either way, maybe you have a rendering of the icon of the button. Should there one exist, you move that to its own, you abstract that to its own file. Maybe this composes the basic button styling and behavior of the button that needs to exist. If you have a custom style themes or animations of the button, you pass them, you would need to pass them through this particularly abstracted function. And then you compose and integrate them all together into the final component that you export out as the button from the button directory. So again, this is another index file inside the button. And don't confuse this with the barrel method. This is this a way of um, what I defined as a folder per component that as the more complex they get, it would make sense to have a directory that breaks apart the pieces of the button and then integrates them into one exported index file. Meaning that's where you build the actual button component and export it so it builds all three of these things within it, right? So in the index file of our button, we could have import the icon base and custom from the appropriate files. There's no index, there's no like re-exporting index here because they're all part of the button itself and that's probably the only place they're gonna be used. Then I would build out my button component that would then uh, render, oh, an implicit return. I was like, why didn't I write return statements? Because I use parentheses here, fancy. So yeah, um, the that would, have the button base icon if it's there, and then the custom stuff if there's any place in there as well inside of our button base, which might be where the actual button is rendered. So, and this would be exported out from our button itself. So that's something to take into consideration, something that you will see commonly done in a lot of projects. In styled component projects, this is a fantastic way to abstract just styled things out of the way and have your index be the actual UI part of the view logic and um, any kind of business logic that has to occur is composed there and all the styled stuff is cut separately and then simply imported and put together in our index. So that's something to keep in mind. There's no specific name for this. Um, it's not the barrel method. Remember that's back up here with re-exporting, but this is sometimes called by like folder by feature or feature folders. You'll see this and also in the Redux toolkit, remember where we had a features folder where we had a slice and all the components that dealt with that slice grouped together. That's the same idea we have over there in Redux toolkit that we're using over here in our component folder. So yeah. Uh, each feature or each component would have its own folder that would then be broken down into smaller parts that integrate together to a larger part that is that folder's export. So that's what we're gonna keep in mind here for that key takeaway, right? Now the big key takeaway is yes, if you got simple components, this is hella overkill and I don't recommend you use it. A lot of the times I recommend a hybrid approach to doing this where you have some files that are just JSXs and you have some folders that are the more complex components with the things broken apart, right? So the best choice often depends on your project's needs. Always consider the trade-offs of the increased complexity of having all this written here, which I wanna talk about down yonder. So, there, uh, between all this stuff I've been talking about, because we're dealing with multiple folders and multiple index.js files and multiple index files that re-export things out via barrel method methodology, that's redundant bar barrel methodology, um, there are a lot of caveats and considerations to take into account here. For example, tree shaking is a big one in modern projects. I talked about this in a previous lecture, but as a reminder, um, if I have a re-exported uh, a re-exported components directory where I have 50 components and a particular project, I use 25 of 50. Now, without tree shaking, all 50 components code would be included in our bundle, increasing its bundle size, ruining some of our page load times, and making our users and our uh, applications load a whole bunch of unnecessary code into the browser. So tree shaking would be like shaking that tree to make sure that all the dead leaves or unused code in our case falls off and we're left with only what we need, AKA the healthy green leaves. This is tree shaking in a nutshell. So modern tools like Webpack, ES Build, and Rollup do usually handle this pretty well. It used to be something you had to configure yourself, but a lot of these things are coming with it out of the box. So sometimes, depending on how you do your re-exporting techniques, it may or may hinder tree shaking. So keep that in mind and investigate whatever choice you end up making. Uh, so yeah, so another big, re another big consideration here that I see my newer students do all the time is something called a circular dependency. These used to crash my applications all the time, but modern build tools like, again, Webpack and ES build, tend not to blow you up as bad as things used to if you had a circular dependency, but even though these tools are getting better at deciphering the circular dependency and resolving it behind the scenes, we're still far, far better off being aware of them and avoiding them in general. So as a quick TLDR, a circular dependency is between two files such as this, two modules, user and post.js. 
user will fetch user details. Notice here it gets the uh, post of this user by calling get post author ID, get post for this author ID. And then in post.js, we import get user, which is from here. In a function called get post, we get the author of a post by passing in the ID of a user to get their user credentials, right? So what we can already see here is that user imports a function from post, post imports a function from user. That's a pretty good sign that you have a circular dependency already happening. So when I attempt to run get user, it will try to get the user's post by calling get post author, right? Get post author will come from here. I'll try to call that. This function calls get post. It sure does. Uh, get post will try and get the post author by calling get user. It'll call get user, which is calling get user, which is calling get post author. And you can see the circular dependency already occurring from the uh, function calls. It creates an infinite loop. These things keep calling each other. This is a direct circular dependency and can cause a lot of issues like stack overflow errors, unexpected behaviors in our code, and then a lot of issues in module resolution, which could break production or which could break your build process if you're not careful. So this is really obvious. In the real world, they can tend to be a little bit harder to spot. Again, pay attention to your imports and exports and make sure one file isn't importing another, which is exporting something being importing in that other file. So that's a really good indication that you have that issue happening here. So keep that in mind. Now, on a quick note as well, which is again, another tangential thing to take into consideration that we've seen me talk about up there in the re-exports and the specified barrel method is whether you'd want to use default or named exports. I tend, these days I tend to do a hybrid approach, but I've gone between defaults only wherever possible. Then I went to a pattern for a while where I did named exports only everywhere and that's it. And now I just kind of take an approach of the two, which, you know, technically like taking the middle of the road is kind of like one of the better ways to do it, I guess. But again, this will all depend on your team's style of preferences or what you decide to do for a project. Just try and be consistent within your own project. Both these approaches between default and named have their own merits. So let's go ahead and discuss some of them about readability, maintainability, and consistency. So default exports do have that level of simplicity that can really make our imports more concise since we can choose any name when importing. This can lead to cleaner code and working with a ton of components. The default import means that we are often, uh, they represent a primary component or module that we want to emphasize. It can feel more natural to import the main component without having to specify a name. And in compatibility, some tools and libraries expect or encourage the use of default exports where others do not. So that's one of my biggest gripes about node modules, for example, in JavaScript is that there's some people do defaults, some people don't, and it gets really annoying trying to take sometimes a guess which one is where, or getting annoyed in TypeScript or documentation, trying to figure out how someone named an export or didn't. So again, this is something you see in all React things ever typically where they do a default level export of whatever the button code happens to be. Uh, if we were re-exporting it, we would do so as the following export named export default as button. So we say, take the default export from button and re-export it as a named export called button. And then we would import it as a named import elsewhere. So this will still result in a named import taking this method, but this is something you could do with a default level export. Now, named exports give us a lot of clarity, right? They provide clear visibility into what's being imported and developers can exactly see which components or modules are being used in an importing file. They are very explicit. There's no guesswork. They have autocomplete and typo support, which is why I lean so heavily on them for quite some time. And then in terms of tree shaking, build tools like Webpack can perform tree shaking more effectively with name exports, removing unused code during the bundling process, which is why you'll sometimes hear don't use defaults, use only name because they help tree shaking. These days it's less of an issue, but back in the day, as in like five, six years ago, when I was first learning React, that was a huge undertaking or a huge consideration you had to have in mind. But these days it's less of an issue. So example, instead of doing a default export, we do a specific named export. In order to export out that button, for example, if you want to do a re-export strategy in a way that specializes using a barrel method, instead of doing default as, we would do export us uh, everything from the button. So as long as we have one named export, it would take that named export, re-export it from the index file and give us a clean looking named import like that on the other end. So in terms of choosing which one is which, TLDR, it depends. <laughs> uh, you're gonna be making trade-offs in either case. Uh, so the takeaway is just be consistent, all right? If you're gonna choose one method or the other, just be consistent for that file, that folder, the re-export strategy you take, just be consistent because 
that is how you can consistently fix it or change it later. If you start to be all willy-nilly and mix and match in the beginning, you're going to screw yourself over in the long run. So like I said, I like a hybrid approach where I typically use defaults for primary components or modules because that makes sense. They are like the big primary thing of a file. And then I use named exports for more specialized components or utilities. I do this a lot. Typically, all React components I treat as default. And I will do this method here of my barrel method re-export technique of exporting default as name, so I have clean named imports while treating my components as the primary default export of their given directories or files. That way, my specialized utilities or services or custom hooks and contexts, I tend to use as named exports and imports because it gives me a very clear, specialized approach to importing and exporting those files out. That's the approach I take. It's a hybrid approach, a pattern I enjoy, and I also endorse for y'all to give a shot on your React project. So um, again, these can lead to maintainable, cleaner code bases. They simplify imports. But again, they do have pitfalls in terms of tree shaking, which is less of an issue these days, but they do present the opportunity for lots of really nasty circular dependencies. So be very mindful of those. Otherwise, I hope you got some ideas for how to approach your NetReacts project in uh, structure and organization with some of these techniques I've been listing here. So happy coding, and I'll see y'all in the next lecture.